Hey everybody, welcome back to Fun with Fallen Flags. This is episode 27. So there's a Facebook group that sent out a question that said, hey, all you guys, have you got multiple projects going or are you just working on one? And I said to myself, I'm really good about that. I just have one going until I started counting. And then once I started counting, the numbers started going up a little bit. So I'd finished a couple recently and posted those um, in previous videos. In this video, we're going to work on the Walther's kit, the Pennsylvania Railroad block and interlocking station kit. So I saw this kit when it came out and I thought, oh, I got to have that because I've got a lot of Pensy stuff. Well, I started it and I put the foundation together, got the windows in, steps on, got the whole thing painted gray, the base plate is put on. Um, I had painted the bottom of the roof. This attaches to the roof section here. And other than that, I had put the chimney and the body together and then textured it so that I had filled in all the cracks where uh, with paint where the mortar would be. Uh, same with the body. So that's as far as we've gotten. So we're gonna go ahead and continue working on this till it's done. <laughs> Unlike its current state. And then I can take one off of the um, kits that I'm currently working on. Um, I don't remember the exact count that I came up with, but I know there's this. There's a couple of things I wanted to do to the trestle. I want to put the little uh, water barrel supports on it. So that's two. Um, other than that, there's a little tiny shed that I have that I need to paint the windows on. So I'm going to count this as three. So I built this a really long time ago. I had weathered the roof. So I think the roof looks really good. Uh, the foundation wall around the outside. But you'll notice that the, the windows are still the same color as the molded plastic brick. So this one needs to get that. So we're going to count this one. So this will be number three. So, but without getting too far ahead of ourselves, we're going to go ahead and finish this. So let's get to it. Okay. So we've got the pieces laid out. We've got the roof, the under piece of the roof. We've got the basement chimney. This is a little roof section that's going to, that's going to shelter the side door. It's going to go right there. This, this piece goes on here. These are the pieces that we haven't cut out yet. Mostly windows and a little bit of supports and stuff for this side step area. And there's a piece of um, acetate plastic that's going to be the windows. Um, I've decided not to, into, to detail the interior on this. So this will go on and we may shade it or something. And then uh, Walther's on their cornerstone set for this blocking station. Doesn't there's not a lot of rule of uh, instructions here, so you can see some of the pieces are already together. Um, most of this has been built. The windows aren't in. Uh, it's essentially the back page that we have to do. So not a lot of work, but there is some detail painting that we do have to do. Um, so don't really need the rule the instructions at this point because I'm getting pretty close and it's pretty obvious what's left. They do include a set of different types of um, block station signing. So whether it's Pennsylvania Railroad vintage or really new Amtrak stuff, Penn Central, whatever. Um, all of this can be used depending on what you want to call the tower. You can also get stuff online where they'll custom make. I've noticed that I think it was on uh, eBay that you can get some of these signs custom made if you want. So, of course, pretty much, you know, for money, you can certainly do it. So we're going to glue this on. We're going to paint the windows. Let's get this right. The 
This is a very, very snug fit. And then the roof section goes on. Going to weather this up so it looks good. It'll go on like that. This piece will go on here. Chimney, windows, and the railing on the side. So that's essentially what we have to do. All right. So the basement's already done. So I think we'll probably start with this and we'll go ahead and put the acetate windows in since this is already done and then we can actually call this piece finished. Um, it's gonna be difficult to do once that's on. We're also going to want to put these two windows in right away because once we put this on, it's going to be very difficult to get the acetate on these two windows once they're on. It's, it's difficult to get in like that. Much easier to do this. Okay, so the foundation is now complete. I've got the windows in the acetate attached to the back of that. Um, I use Walther's glue. It's a better idea to use that super glue, plastic cement, doesn't really stick to acetate very well. So you can see all four of them have nice globs of uh, Walther's goo on the back. So we're gonna let that dry. Since I was working on windows, I decided I might as well continue on and work on the rest of the windows for the structure itself. Uh, there's several that need to be put in place, and I really need to put the bottom ones in before I attach the foundation anyway. So I cut those off the sprue, and you can see they're ready pretty much to be painted. So as I was thinking about the color I wanted to use, originally I was going to paint this with kind of a Tuscan red around the insides. And then I thought, well, I found a picture of a interlocking station that is um, a Pennsylvania one that's more of a the Pullman green around the tops and then some of the the panels are gonna stay this buff color uh, I kind of like the look of it it didn't look quite so ornate uh, it looked like it had probably been painted that for a while so I'm gonna go ahead and try that out so in advance of spray painting this entire thing of a Pullman green, I've put a uh, rubber cement or a rubber mask on here. So I'm using uh, liquid masking film. So I put a couple of coats on here, but I'm curious to see how thin I can get away with it. So we're going to go ahead and let this dry that I've put in here in these panels, these recessed panels. And then we're going to paint it and then we're going to either pull the mask out or it also recommends that if you have trouble you can put a little bit of water on there and let them dissolve a little bit and then rub them off with your finger. So we're going to try and see which is the most effective. So we know these panels are going to be a buff color and the rest of it will be a green I may change that. I may add a little bit more buff on the trim at the top. I haven't really decided, but it's essentially going to be mostly a green color, fairly close to what the matte here is. So let's take a look at that after we get a shot of spray paint on this thing, and then we'll try to get these um, liquid mask panels cleared off and see what that looks like. Okay, so we've got the windows painted. Look pretty good, nice and even. My thumb. <laughs> I always paint something. And then this has been painted. You can see nice, crisp, clear lines on the mask, which is always a challenge. So the next step is to soak this and see if we can get some of this rubber masking 
off. I'm going to soak it in water for a little bit and see if that makes it a little easier. Um, the layer on there is pretty good and I've got to take off five separate spots so I want to make it as easy as possible. So we'll take a look at that next. Okay, you can see that the rubber does kind of come off pretty easily once it soaks. So I'm going to let it soak a little bit longer, see if we can get it off all in one piece. Um, it looks pretty good. Just to be safe, I'm going to let it soak just a little bit longer. Um, while I was doing that, I remembered an old recommendation that a, a modeler that I had met as a kid did. On the bottom of his figures, he would write what kind of paint he had used. He didn't have to keep track of anything. So if it was a base of a building, for example, this is the color green that I used. I'm not really too worried about the gray for the foundation. I could probably replicate that really easily if I needed to. But um, the green is always a little tougher to match. So in this case, you can see I used um, a dark green military model paint. So if I ever need to redo it, whatever, replicate it on another building, then I can do that. It's got a record of it right there. After peeling away the rubber, the paint around the edges came up with it a little bit so I'm not sure if I actually saved any time but it's still going to require a little bit of touch up. So we got a little better detail here. Lines are a little straighter. Looks much better. So I'm excited to put that in. Um, at this point we're going to go ahead and start on the windows. I tacked two of them in with just some super glue and I'm going to start on all of the windows now. Uh, they've all been painted green so everything matches. We're going to go ahead and glue these in, glue the acetate in. Um, the ones here I'm going to actually put in and glue the acetate in once I get the windows in place and the ones in the bottom I may actually do the acetate and the, on the windows and then glue them in place just you know whatever's easiest for you um, and then the acetate on this guy is gonna be um, tricky because it's all put together so you're gonna have to get around these tight little corners and make sure everything looks good good part is all three of these windows that's gonna be one piece of acetate so I'm excited about that once we get all the windows, the acetate in and the windows in, we're going to go ahead and put the roof on. So I've painted the roof black, just a flat, flat black, and then the little shelter uh, side door entrance over here has this little black guy. And then these supports here hold that up. Got to paint those green so it, uh, everything matches. And um, once that's done, then these are going to get uh, weathered. I'm not going to do a ton of weathering on this building, a little bit, but it is brick. Um, so I'm going to do a few stains, but uh, the roof is definitely going to get weathered. It is brand new, flat black, and that's just not going to look good. We want to make sure that the roof is uh, heavily weathered. So we're going to go ahead and get started on putting all the windows in, and then... We will take a look at it once that step is finished. Okay, at this stage we got the windows in, the acetates all glued, and I just kind of snapped the base on just to see what it would look like. I haven't glued that on yet. Um, but you can see what it's starting to look like. Um, so next we have to put the roof section on. And I'm going to have to weather it up a little bit. It's just too boring and black for what we want to see. And we still have to work on, so the chimney goes on as well. And I painted a little bit of silver around the base of the chimney, just so it looks like there's some flashing on there when it's sitting on the chimney. 
Um, and then we need to do the supports here on the side for the little tiny roof section. And then that roof section we're going to want to um, weather as well so it looks better. But it's looking nice. I like it. Some of the detail, it's kind of hard to see. Like this little um, stripe up along in here for the trim piece. But we know it's there and that's all that matters. Okay, everybody, the base has been glued on now. There's our painting notes. And the roof has been glued on along with the chimney. Um, I did a little bit of weathering on the top on the roof, a little bit of rust, and a little bit of just general weathering. Uh, there's a little pipe comes out of here probably for a stove and it's got a little bit of black around it. So the roof is glued on and I also assembled the um, the little doorstep protection here. So there's a little roof, there's two sides and there's a tiny little bar you really can't see very well. And um, all of that's green, it matches, the roof matches. So Essentially, the building is glued together at this point. Uh, we still have to do the railing down this side. And then we're going to paint that kind of a silver and probably do maybe a couple little rust um, stains or streaks off down over here by the concrete. So uh, let's get to that. That's our last step, really. And then we can call this project done. But it's looked pretty good so far, so let's get the railing done. Okay, so the railing is in place, and that whole part of the building is done. That really completes the project. So I'm pretty happy with the way it turned out. I think it looks great. It actually took a little bit more time than I thought it was going to, but I also spent a lot more time detailing the very front of it with the uh, the paint colors and the panels and that type of thing. Completely changed the colors that I was going to use, but I think I made a good choice. It's a little more subdued. It doesn't look quite so ornate from, you know, turn of the century. It looks a little bit more uh, middle century, so, which is kind of the era that I'm going for. So... I really, really like the way this turned out. Hey guys, I appreciate everybody tuning in for episode 27. This is the end of the long overdue project for the uh, Pennsylvania Railroad interlocking and block tower. So it's done. It's off the shelf. I've got the other two that I mentioned at the beginning of this. Um, just touching up, painting something, a little tiny building. It actually will look really good with the uh, block tower. And then um, a DCC decoder that I'm going to put in a Denver Rio Grande Western um, steam engine. So that brass engine is probably going to get done next because I've already done a video of breaking open the box and uh, everything that's in it and the, what the project entails. So that's it for me. Um, I hope everybody has a great 2019 and thanks again for tuning in. We will see you on episode 28. Thanks you guys.